Cheers and welcome to Irondale Brewing. With the strawberry experiment beers sadly behind us and the uh, weather taking a very hard turn into fall here in the Pacific Northwest, I thought I'd catch up on some of the footage I've been taking using my Brazilla and talk about some of the other beers I've been doing in the, in the interim. Um, so the first thing I'll say is I did get a 65 liter Brazilla a while back. I've used it a few times. Um, the rather haphazardly put together footage you're going to see in this video is from my first brew day. I started thinking I won't film anything because I'm going to have my hands full figuring the thing out for the first time. Uh, but, um, you know, kind of as I got going, I'm like, ah, I'll just take some clips and see how it comes out. And it, you know, it's decent enough that I thought I'd talk about it. But the main reason I wanted to do this video is to talk about the beer that I brewed as my first beer on the Brusillo, which was an American Amber Ale. And specifically, this was for the North Olympic Brewers Guild uh, 2024 Parameter Brew, uh, which is kind of like the experiment brew. They basically say, you know, here's a kind of the guidelines and everybody's going to make a beer kind of based on these guidelines. Guidelines this time around were very loose. Um, my first time participating in this, so I don't know what they've done in the past. But basically, um, there's a uh, farm near me called Chimicum Valley uh, Granary, and they grow and floor malt their own uh, malt. And so they generously donated uh, everybody in the uh, in the brew club um, 12 and a half pounds of this uh, excellent floor malted. Um, it's a Maris Otter variant. Um, I learned at, at when we did our tasting of all our different beers. Um, and so that's fantastic. It's just, you know, it's grown and malted two miles from my house. That's pretty pretty freaking cool. Um, so what I decided to do for my, and sorry, for the parameter brew, the only rule was you got to use that as the only base malt. And then anything else, uh, you know, was fair game, basically. So we got an interesting variety of things um, to, to taste at the, at the tasting. Um, what I decided to do was try to do something that would emphasize the base malt without just being a smash beer. Um, just didn't, you know, didn't appeal to me just to do, hey, here's a Citra, whatever. Um, I wanted to get a little bit uh, more uh, into it than that. So I decided to do one of my favorite styles, which is an American Amber Ale. Now, the tricky part about this is, depending on who you ask, uh, Munich is typically would be in a lot of American Amber Ales, but depending on who you ask, it either is or isn't a base grain. I wanted to be as, uh, you know, hold the rules as, as much as I could, so I decided I'm not going to use Munich, and um, but I still wanted to kind of emphasize the the uh, excellent uh, Chimican Valley Greenery uh, base grains. And I was going to pour a glass before I started, and I didn't, but we'll see one at the end um, and do a tasting. Uh, so what I wound up with for a recipe on this was uh, about 90% of this uh, um, uh, Chimican Valley granary floor malted uh, two row. And then I did uh, about a little over four and a half percent of crystal 40, a little over four and a half percent of crystal 80, and then about 1% of Carafa one, because I really wanted that, that color in there and just a little bit of roastiness. And I, spoiler alert about that for the tasting, I think it came out fantastic. Um, First brew on the Brusilla, um, it I just used the malt pipe and I milled the grains to about 0.04 inches on my uh, what is mine Mighty Mill I'm about to say Monster Mill Mighty Mill um, and uh, that and they just used the malt pipe and that was a, I didn't get very good efficiency it was 61 percent um, as you'll hear in a, a later video about the Brusilla I'm not particularly hung up on getting super high. Uh, efficiency. I just kind of want consistency, so that's what I was going for. I assumed I might get 70%, so it came out a little bit lower than uh, what I was hoping, but not the end of the world. Um, for hops, I used um, half ounce of Warrior as the boil hop. Um, that seemed to be, I was going to use, um, I can't remember the name of the one I was going to use, but I couldn't find it anywhere, so one well, with Warrior, it seemed to be a good. The thing for Amber Ales is you want to go with um, a low cohumulon hop uh, because that gives it a nice smooth bitterness um, and I did not want this to like hit you in the face with the bitterness especially again I, my interest was kind of emphasizing the maltiness of this uh, beer and then I used a quarter ounce of Cascade at 10 minutes quarter ounce of Centennial at 10 minutes and then um, quarter or uh, yeah and then another quarter ounce of Cascade and Centennial at flame out um, so that's why I came up for the, res for the recipe, um, and then I fermented with uh, Lalamond uh, BRY97 uh, for water chemistry. I just did the whatever brew father told me to do with uh, kind of the amber uh, profile that they have. Started with RO water and then added uh, added to get that up. 
Um, and then I mashed at 154 for an hour. Um, I ended up boiling this one for uh, 90 minutes because the uh, volume was a little bit high when I got done. So I just boiled an extra half hour and that seemed to get it down to where it needed to be. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll talk about more of the stats uh, and when, when you can see the beer. Um, and so anyway, uh, apologize in advance for the, uh, for the rather chopped up nature of this. I just took some kind of clips of me using the Brusilla for the first time. It kind of stops at towards the end because at that point I realized for my chiller, I didn't have lo quite long enough hoses for what I needed. So I kind of ended up wheeling the Brusilla around. I didn't want to be dealing with trying to film all that. Um, but that, that was a good, it was a good learning experience because as I went, I took notes on, get, you know, get longer hoses, you know, have something to put such and such in that sort of stuff, which is kind of uh, you know, how I operate. I had to, felt like I had to jump in because I had to get this beer done. It was a good opportunity to use the Brazilla for the first time. Um, and, you know, as I do, learn as you go. And, you know, I knew going into it, there was nothing that was going to be catastrophically wrong. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, the uh, Brazilla performed well. You'll see in a future video, the Brazilla ended up failing. Um, probably the next video I'll release. Um, ended up having to get a new one. So I'll talk about that. Uh, in the next one. Um, but yeah, let's just get into some of these clips, um, kind of showing the uh, more gorilla style of filming for the um, for the first brew day. And then at the end, we'll do a tasting. It's a very auspicious day at Irondale Brewing. I think you can see that. This is two row pale malt. Special thing about it, it's from Chimicum Valley Granary, which is about, I don't know, two miles from my house. They grow it there. They malt, they floor malt it there which is uh, pretty cool. So the other thing, first run of the Brusilla. It is, I'm just running some uh, PBW right now since uh, I've never cleaned it before. Getting it set up uh, and I'm gonna brew. It's gonna be a long day because it's <laughs> a lot of figuring stuff out. But um, this uh, grain is gonna be used in the parameter brew for you see that NOBG, that's North Olympic Brewers Guild. Um, and basically the Chimicum Granary uh, donated uh, grain so we can all do a brew with that as the only base grain and I'm going to be doing an uh, American Amber Ale with that as the base grain. A little bit of uh, Crystal 40, a little bit of Crystal 80, a very little bit of Carafa 1 for color um, and I was going to use Horizon Hops but you can't get them anywhere so I will be using, um, what did I go with, Warrior, uh, Cascade, and Centennial. And uh, this is going to be a very um, haphazard video. I'll warn you in advance because uh, the brewery is still a mess getting, making a home for this thing. Uh, never used it before. Um, I did all the research I could and it's just time to pull the trigger and uh, go for it. So <laughs> we'll have some uh, potentially interesting clips as we go. Just want to get a quick shot of a little bit of this beautiful Chimicum Granary grain. It smells fantastic. Tastes delicious. It's really bready with just a hint of sweetness to it. Um, it should work great in this amber ale. So I'm really excited to get going on the brew. First brew day with the Brizella. It looks like a war zone in here and I am figuring it out as I go. Uh, despite all your research and reading, when you actually do it, it's a little bit different. Anyway, I think things are going okay. A little bit of a rough start uh, because there was a leak down there in this ball valve. Uh, I think it was the hose clamp, got that replaced. It seems to have fixed it. Got it all cleaned, starting much later than I wanted to on the actual uh, getting it up to strike temp, but we are doing an American Amber Ale with locally grown and locally floor malted two row, which is really exciting. So I'll have more to say about this beer in the future, but uh, wish me luck. So we got mashed in. Um, again, like I said, this is gonna be pretty uh, chopped up today because I'm having to pay attention to what, what I'm doing since it's the first uh, brew on the Brewzilla. Uh, but it is doing a super excellent job of holding the temp. I'm mashing this uh, batch at 154 um, and once it hit 154, it has been pretty much dead on. Um, I did, I'll put some links, but I did a lot of uh, kind of research on the settings, um, you know, made some guesses since this is my first batch. Of course, I'll have to dial it in. Um, well, this part actually seems to be working fine, so I don't have to mess with it too much, I don't think. Um, but the key, as probably you know, if you know about Brazilas, is this uh, Bluetooth uh, temperature probe and then you basically set it to work set them to work in conjunction with one another and it's been doing amazing um holding that you know it's i think the thing to remember is you want an average mash temp this is uh it's not going to be perfect it's not going to be perfect throughout the entire mash um and so don't get too hung up on it and actually overshooting a little bit is better than undershooting 
Um, and I, you know, I think this, of course, now that I start recording, I think this is the highest I've seen it go. Uh, and I do have a temperature differential of a couple degrees and it never stays there long. So I think I'm getting a pretty stable 154. Um, I do have the jacket for this thing that might have helped as well. Um, and you know, it, uh, if nothing else, it's doing exactly what I told it to do. I might want to deal, dial it in a little bit next time, but you know, overall, um, it seems to be doing a great job. So really pleased with that part of it. Yes, the brewery is still a disaster, but uh, we <laughs> I forged out enough space to make this work. Anyway, that's the leftover greens from today's uh, first Brewzilla brew. And we are coming up to a boil. It is imminent. Looking good. A little high on volume, I think. Uh, but again, first time we'll calibrate and uh, adjust on the next one. But hopefully I can always just boil a little bit longer. Um, yeah, it's coming along nicely. So we're getting towards the end of the boil, uh, but I'm still pretty high. I don't know if, you know, Brewfather may have just overestimated, and this was the first, uh, my first try, you know, so it's, I shouldn't blame, this, blame the software. The software is doing exactly what I put in there, uh, slash default, slash looking around. The boil off rate seems to be about right, because um, I started at about eight gallons. I don't know how you can see that. I want to get this in the steam. And I'm down to seven after almost an hour, but the post boil volume is supposed to be more like six and a quarter. So I'm going to add 30 minutes to the boil and we'll hope that uh, gets that um, gets that dialed in a little bit better. All right, hopefully that gave you somewhat of an experience in my first brew day on the uh, Brazilla 65 liter. Talk about the problems I had with it in a future video. I got two more kind of brew days, uh, one that didn't go well, another one that went pretty well. Um, anyway, here is the start of today's video, which is the American Amber Ale made with our locally uh, grown and floor malted uh, two row that, um, as I said, I learned is a, um, when we did our tasting day and got a tour of the farm and the brewery that they have there and all that, and just super cool stuff, really nice folks, um, that it's a uh, Pacific North, Northwest grown Maris Otter variant. Um, so anyway, this is the beer. Um, on the nose, it's super malty, which is what I was going for. Um, you know, not, you know, it, it's an amber. Um, the Color, I think, came out really well. I think, um, and I got a new light. Hopefully, it's not annoying or totally out of whack. But it's it's a pretty clear beer. Um, you know, it is an amber. Um, let me see what Brewfather thinks the SRM is on this one. Um, I brewed this back in August. I can't remember if I mentioned that. So it's been, and this is October now. So it's <laughs> been in the cake for a while. Um, and uh, let me see. that. So Brewfather was guessing the SRM was about 12 get one of those SRM cards. But that, you know, that seems pretty accurate to me. It's a really nice color. Hopefully this comes out well on camera. Um, be able to set it down for a second or hold it up like this. Um, to me, it's a really nice copper um, color, coppery amber color, not leaning over into the red side, um, you know, which uh, some, you know, there's a little bit of a little bit of a uh, bleed over between amber and red in some cases, but I think it came out uh, just a really nice uh, coppery amber color, so I was really pleased with that. Um, and, uh, but, uh, yeah, and it just smells like a really nice malty, you don't get a whole lot of hop aroma, maybe a little bit, but a really nice malty rich uh, amber beer. So let's taste it. I've had a few of these, but not today. This is the first one today. <laughs> Yeah, that's holding up really well. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's nice and malty. That floor malted um, two row is, it's a little bit, so a couple things I noticed. One is that it had a little bit higher moisture content than maybe the grains I'm used to getting from, you know, Brees or R or whatever. Um, and it's also just a little bit, uh, it's very bready, but it has just a little bit of sweetness to it. Not as sweet as like, say, a Brees, you know, pale two row or something like that. So it's, it's a, I thought it was a really good mix of not completely lacking any sweetness, but not, you know, as sweet as some of the commercial uh, malts that I've used in the past. So um, I thought it worked really well in this uh, style of beer. Um, and the hops are just, they're there, but they're mellow, which is exactly what I was going for. So I'm really pleased with how that worked out. Again, low cohumulon hops for this style of beer work fantastically well, but then that kind of light addition of Cascade and Centennial gives it just a little bit of a sharper bite. Um, but again, I did that at 10 minutes and flame out just a quarter ounce each. So half ounce total of both of those, but late 
um, and no dry hopping or anything. And uh, yeah, that's, I'm still really enjoying that beer. I think I'm actually going to enter this in the November beer uh, competition. It's holding up well. I was a little bit concerned because it's been in the keg for a while, but it seems to be holding up pretty well. Um, so that was my first Brewzilla brew. Like I said, I got 61% efficiency. Let me look at some up some of the stats. Bear with me on the batch itself. Because uh, for the recipe, I was going for about 5.4% uh, ABV, OG a 1053, FG a 1012. Oh, yeah, I should say that too. The other thing I love about this beer is it came out nice and crisp at the end. Some amber, this, you know, tastes very, but for me, some amber ales finish too sweet. Um, one around here that I like quite a bit that this is came out, I wasn't even shooting to make a clone or, you know, something reminiscent of it, but it came out very similar to Mac and Jack's Amber Ale. I don't know how widely available that is. Um, that's from uh, Mac and Jack's in Seattle. Um, and it came out really similar to that and, you know, kind of even drier, which I like. I love Mac and Jack's, um, but uh, this came out similar flavor. Um, in fact, one of the people <laughs> at the tasting said, this is like Mac and Jack's only better, uh, which I, Huge, huge uh, compliment uh, for for uh, my first shot at uh, on the Brusilla, um, and I felt like I did those those local grains justice too. I, that's kind of what I was going for, and they, they were they were all great beers. Uh, you know, one person did a hazy that came out just fantastic and ended up winning the tasting. Uh, mine came in with the second highest number of votes, um, and I can't even remember. It's been too long now what the other various beers were, but it's just you know it's a lot of fun to see what people did with the with this malt. Uh, okay, so bear with me. I know I'm staring at my phone, but the um, so the batch itself, like I said, came, instead of 10:53, it came in at 10:43, so a little bit low, um, but it finished uh, at 10:09, um, so nice and nice and dry, um, and that made the ABV, if I can find it, yeah, four and a half. So you know, lower than I was shooting for, but it is not. Um, I'm not mad at it. It's it drinks. Re it's a really smooth, easy drinking beer. Um, and yeah, I'm just really pleased with how that came out. The glass, a lot of condensation going on, but, um, yeah, color's fantastic. Nice and malty. Uh, head retention's pretty good. Yeah, it's kind of hanging around, sticking on the glass. Yeah, that is just, I mean, I know I'm tooting my own horn here, but it's more like I'm really ple pleased with how this came out. You know, if I was in a bar and ordered this beer, I'd be very happy with it. Um, yeah, I think that was a pretty good. Uh, the only thing I would say, if, the, if there was that Munich in there, would give it a little bit fuller body. It's not, you know, it's not thin bodied or anything, but it would just give it that little bit of extra something. But again, I wanted to stick as close as I could to the rules of the parameter brew and not use anything that anything else that could be considered a base malt. Um, so I think that's it for this video. We'll talk more. I have two more. Um, videos coming up uh, about the Brusilla, well, brew days on the Brusilla, and one in particular you want to watch where uh, the Brusilla uh, completely failed, and I had to <laughs> scramble and finish salvage as much as I could in my old pot, and uh, we'll talk about how that uh, came out in the next one. But anyway, uh, back on more brew days um, moving forward. I think I got a couple more uh, in the planning phases, and a lot of ingredients to start going through. So, cheers.